Hello, I'm Princess Serena, not Princess Serena, and today is March 11th, aka the premiere of Turning Red at the time of recording this. I just finished about a half an hour ago, and of course I had to change into some Canadian attire because finally a Disney movie, let alone a Pixar movie, my fave type of Disney movie for the most part. Yeah, not looking at you over there. It represents Toronto, so I had to change into my CNE shirt. It is red very appropriate but also it is a canadian national exhibition which takes place every summer here in toronto really close to the cn tower which you see a lot of in the film so this is the first on the channel i have not talked to anyone i have not read anything about the film so this is my raw unfiltered thoughts so without further ado let's get into it in true princess fashion, I have to show y'all some Pixar marquee pins that I haven't been able to show on the channel yet. So if you're only interested in my turning red thoughts, I'll leave the timestamps in the description below. I have been really loving Pixar's new direction this decade for pins. Pins. <laughs> that too. For movies <laughs> as well. So it's representative here. It kicked off the new generation, I guess, of Pixar films with Onward. And I got the marquee back in December for a steel video here in Canada, keeping with the theme here. And uh, Barley and Ian. I love that the marquee pins always have like a pin on pin element. And it's just such a nice touch and I love the design, like the pop of blue on the classic black background. It's simple but exquisite, you know? And it's an LE300. Next up, I have Soul here. And I also already have the Luca marquee pin. So I was like thinking I was gonna try to get like all of the newer Pixar releases, like from the 2020s. So then I would have to go after the turning red marquee, but I'm not sure if that's my vision anymore. I don't know. I love Pixar. I don't love Pixar any less if I stop collecting a lot of it, but I don't know. I'm just not feeling the pins lately. Please don't turn into a giant red panda and attack me for that. <laughs> Joe in 22 again, pin on pin. We love that. And uh, the blue, fading into black here it just like i feel like it's so representative like you think you're really following 22's journey into like loving life and like you know going here but really like joe is kind of the opposite here as joe is like teaching 22 to love life i feel like he's getting wrapped into like all the unimportant things in life and the soul one is an le 400 moving onward to the soul of this video but i'm very chaotic already, but I'm sure that's gonna represent my thoughts here because I have no idea what I'm gonna say, but I'm just I'm gonna get into it. So turning red, I was very apprehensive and like felt like mixed feelings looking at the trailer. Usually I have a good idea if I'm gonna like really like the film based on the trailer or at least like it or like maybe not my cup of tea, but like I wasn't sure because the concept of like a girl turning into a red panda, I'm like, what can this represent? I know it says like growing up as a beast, but I'm like, that's kind of cliche, you know? Like obviously growing up, there's like challenges and this could be done well and this could be done very blandly. And I really trust Pixar, especially their direction in the last couple of movies. So it was like high expectations. I've seen a lot of comments in the trailer saying, oh, this looks so cringy. Oh my goodness. But like, honestly, I commend Pixar on keeping a 13 year old cringy. Like it's very representative of like who you are. Like you're awkward and you're just like saying random things to kind of seem cool. And you're with your friends and you're all cringy together. And it's like weird and but a good kind of weird. And that energy definitely like flowed in the first, you know, 20, 30 minutes of the film. I didn't know where it was going. I thought it was cute whatever nothing special but then all of a sudden when she found out that like her mom kind of got rid of the panda and I was like expected of her and she embraced it like really quickly like that's kind of where it like flipped for me this film that I was like oh this is very interesting I thought the whole film was gonna be her scared and like being in these awkward situations like being the panda and then not being able to control it but she was able to control it the second her friends were like yeah we love you unconditionally so like you're good like panda no panda we're fine and then it was just more focusing on like typical you know 13 year old things like trying to like balance oh but I really need my mom's approval but like also I want to be with my friends and like you know their parents are less strict and they're doing all these things and I feel like this is such an important film and it's like she learned a lot you know valuing herself when she was doodling all of those drawings of that boy and her mom was like freaking out and like her reaction was like I'm sorry like to herself not to her mom just like I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm I, what was I thinking this is trash like oh uh, it's like you really saw like it was ingrained in her that like she had to be perfect and if her mom's 
vision of like perfection wasn't aligned with like what she wanted to do it was like no forget about it you know so it was a very interesting because they really took that message throughout the whole film but it wasn't like too much if that makes sense like you still focus on her with her friends and like being able to let loose because of this panda and like how this panda represents so much and yeah i was really curious what the panda significance was like gonna be in the film but I'm really happy the way they went with it and then it was like intergenerational as well because then you see the mom's mom as soon as like she calls you see this fear in her eyes like that she had this type of relationship that she's building with her daughter now it's like she's instilling fear instead of love even though they think that's what love is type of thing like oh I know what's best I know what's best I'm gonna ignore you so so interesting that they brought the mom into this and it was beautifully executed and the fact that they were just trying to save up for like a concert and it was like it represents womanhood like we're adults now at least according to the TTC that was amazing that's the Toronto Transit Commission I think it stands for it's like our subway and bus system here so I thought that was kind of amazing they flash Canadian things at you all the time also of course the one film where everyone's I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry takes place in Canada did y'all realize how many times Megan and her mom said sorry 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 even though it was like not their fault like literally oh my gosh I thought that was amazing. Duke Kaboom could never. I'm finally happy we have like more of an accurate representation of Canada. Then just the climax of this film. Like, like I felt that the mom was going to turn into her panda because they really emphasize like, oh, we don't talk about that. I've seen it once. It was huge. We, we don't talk about it. So I'm like, clearly the mom has to like go through some things as well. And then when she like her necklace started to crack i was like oh my gosh yes and it was like perfect timing because at the ritual she was finally like i want to be the panda this is me and it didn't come out of nowhere like she wasn't just like you know this goody goody and then all of a sudden she's like no i'm a panda so i'm gonna do what i want like it really wasn't the panda that like did that it was kind of her journey while being the panda and kind of listening to her friends more and like one thing led to another and she was breaking one rule one rule lying lying more so she was like more comfortable kind of being a 13 year old and just like doing that things that come with it you know not saying lying and deception is being a 13 year old but like you know just like being with your friends and that was really shown really well and I loved how it kind of started with oh like come do karaoke with us which I gotta say <laughs> I go in Toronto karaoke not since the lockdown but like I want to again and that's my idea of a good time I'm a 13 year old girl I never let my panda go away no <laughs> but then at the end of the film when like everything was kind of settled it kind of ended with uh, the friends like okay we're going to karaoke now you know I'll be back by dinner well I just love that that was like a full circle moment yeah sorry I'm jumping all over the place here back to the mom and when she was the panda and at the concert and I was like okay interesting climax but I don't know I feel like it can be better and then it was when they were doing the ritual again and then the whole family just like no it's family first and they all turned in the panda even though they all kind of are ashamed of the panda in a sense and like seen it more as a burden but then the dad saw that video camera and then her having fun as being the panda and stuff and just like that moment kind of really solidified um, and put in, in May's head like, oh wait, this is a part of me type of thing. And I just thought that was such a beautiful moment. Like I like that side. Everyone has a different side to them and some, you know, don't come to light, but I like this side of you. It made me laugh. It's just something like so simple, like letting loose and just like being yourself and like not just being so uptight all the time um, and not being just like the idea you think you need to be, but just like yourself and like all the layers that come with that. She could still be a, like a decent student, but like also have fun with her friends. You don't have to be like either extreme. She kind of made up her mind. She wanted the panda because it's part of herself and everything. And she was like in control of it. Um, and then she saw her mom, but like the young version of her crying, saying like, I hurt my mom and I was out of control. And like, I just, that was like, I literally, why was I crying? <laughs> I didn't think I would cry in this film. Um, it was just so unexpected. Like I thought she was gonna like find her mom and they're just gonna talk about what happened with them and that's it. But it's like, obviously what happened with her mom and then her grandma like is happening again. So it's like, she was able to kind of talk to herself in a way because she was saying, you know, it's okay. It may feel like you're not good enough, but it's not gonna always feel like that it's not like that it's like she was talking to herself because it's exactly where she is right now and then you saw like the mom quickly grow up like in two seconds and 
And then she shed her panda and she's like, are you sure you don't want to come? Like with me, you should. And this time she was more gentle with it. And she's already starting to come in terms of like who her daughter is and everything, especially because she was reflecting on what happened with her relationship with her own mother. And she's like, no, this is who I am and that's it. And yeah, I just, I thought it was so nice that she actually kept it at the end. I wasn't really thinking about would she, wouldn't she, but I'm really glad she did because of what the panda represents. Also, I thought it was kind of interesting that like she's like, oh my god, I'm a red monster. And then the mom's like, oh, you got your period. Oh my gosh. Like here, here, how have all the pads. I was not expecting that. That was amazing. Is that the reason why it was PG? A lot of kids watching this are gonna be like, what are pads? What's a period? Like it's, it's gonna be a lot of interesting conversations in households today. So that's it for my thoughts on turning red. I'm interested to seeing other people's opinions on this film, what they thought about it. I have no idea where it's gonna place in my ranking but I will give it some thought this weekend before I put this video up on Tuesday and I will put my ranking right here it is right here I feel like it at least made mid tier I don't see it being lower than that is in like top 15 but you never know I could surprise myself and I also rearranged a couple more Pixar films if you remember where I rank things in the past so I moved a couple things a little higher a little lower as well I gave it some thought the last few months so it's interesting to see this list evolving. If you want to know all my thoughts about all the Pixar films, I did a review slash ranking of like every single one. So check that out. I would love to know what your top three Pixar movies are and where this places in your ranking around. And as always, take care of yourselves and have a magical day. And remember to release the red panda every once in a while. <laughs> Bye.